Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The message tonight. The message tonight is, don't recorded. don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. This is going to be an interesting message tonight. So, once again, if you got your paper and pens, Amen. You're going to want to take some notes. Um, this is going to be a very interesting message, Amen. We are in a we are in a battle today, a battle that has been waged since before we could remember. Most thought. Most most thought when the Messiah came, he would come with the sword and his army. But what most wasn't aware of was the word was sharper than any two-edged sword. They had took his kindness for weakness. And while they thought they were winning, the devil's kingdom was being destroyed from within. Yeshua said, don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. But that's not all he said in that line of scripture. So let's read it and break it down. Amen. Go with me to, to Matthew's chapter 7, uh, verse 6. Matthew's chapter 7, verse 6. Amen. And it reads, Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor throw your pearls before the pigs, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. I mean, let me let me read that one more time, okay? This is this is really important. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor throw your pearls before the pigs, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Do not give what is holy to the dogs. Let's look at let's let's look at this first. First thing we need to know is what kind of dogs was Yeshua talking about? You see, there is wild dogs and there are domesticated dogs. In Yeshua's time, he was referring to the wild dogs. Watch this, listen to me. Wild dogs were like most carnivore animals in the wilderness. They ate anything they had the strength to conquer. They were very dangerous, although they looked harmless. Are you hearing me? They traveled in large packs and were very smart. Wild dogs are highly social animals. They usually chase their prey until it's tired and then attack their legs so it's hard to escape. Are you hearing me? Wild dogs will misuse you, abuse you, set you up, and eat you alive when you least expect it. Is somebody hearing me today? Watch, watch, watch the connections. Watch the connections. Wild dogs regurgitates its food for its young so they can eat. Amen. That's where the scriptures get the proverb that's in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. A dog returns to his vomit. Proverbs 26, 11 says, As a dog returns to his own vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. A man that is constantly cheating or hurting a woman is called a dog. Come on, y'all are y'all with me tonight? But the father says that he is a fool and is compared to a wild dog. This comparison is is for those who are not hearing and obeying the word of the Most High Yah. Amen. Are you catching this so far? Yeshua then said, Nor throw your pearls before the pigs. Those who still eating pork, no, watch this, those who still eating pork, you're not going to like how this breaks down. Amen. You're not going to like how this breaks down. Pearls are references to your wisdom. Wisdom you obtain from the word of the Father. Not everybody will accept to hear the word of the Father because they don't want to be obedient to his word because it cramps their lifestyle. Pigs didn't make the approval list of the Most High. They're an unclean animal. Amen. Go with me to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 through 8. Let's look at this real quick. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 through 8. And it reads, And the pig, though it has a split hoof, completely divided, yet does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. Their flesh you do not eat, and their carcasses you do not touch, they are unclean to you. Amen. Pigs are constantly hungry and will eat anything they, they will eat anything. They live in disorderly and dirty conditions. 
Pigs are greedy and always want what's not theirs. Are you hearing me? Pigs are greedy and always want what's not theirs. They harbor parasites and diseases in their body that can be transmitted like an STD. Pigs have small lungs and most of them suffer from bronchitis, pneumonia, and human influenza. These are the things you put in your body and try to justify it with a little bit of human wisdom. Come on, stay with me. Saying, if I bless it, it will be all right. But how can you bless what the Father already cursed? Mm, come on, let me say that again. How can you bless what the Father already cursed? Stop casting your pearls amongst the swine. There are children of Yah and children of disobedience. Time to make up your mind. Which one are you? Isaiah 65 3 through 4 says, The people who provoke me continually to my face, who slaughter in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend the night in secret places, who eat flesh of pigs and the broth of uncleanliness is in their pots. Yeshua didn't play with those who didn't want to receive the word. That's why he told the disciples, If they don't receive you, thus you your feet off and keep it moving. <laughs> they will have their day of judgment. That's why he said, lest they trample them under their feet. In verse 6 of Matthew 7, the children of disobedience will not receive the word. The haters of today, those who want to see you poor, busted, and disgusted, they want you to fail. They want something bad to happen to you just so you can shut up. And they can say, I told you so. In Yeshua's days, he had a lot of them around him. Most of them were called Pharisees. The rest of them were his own people. Mm, yeah, see that. But look what he says. Look what he says. Check this. Look what he says in Matthew chapter 15, verses 13 through 14. But he answering said, Every plant which my father of the heaven has not planted shall be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. He said, leave them alone. Did you hear it? He said, leave them alone. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor throw your pearls. This is the next part of the scripture. It says, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor throw your pearls before the pigs, lest they trample them under their feet feet. The last part of that verse he says, and turn and tear you into pieces. Pigs, check this, pigs don't care what they eat and their teeth are powerful enough to tear you into pieces. In other words, they will take your wisdom, trample on it, and because you're not strong enough, use it against you to break apart your entire belief system. Is somebody hearing me? Pigs were offered up by rivals to the Hebrews as sacrifices to their gods, but to our father, they are considered unclean. And unacceptable. What you can't offer up to the Most High is unclean in your life. Let me say that again. What you can't offer up to the Most High is unclean in your life. Go with me. Let me let me show you something. Go with me to Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 15. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 15. And it reads, and they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the God, to, to the Garadines. And when he came out of the boat, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broke in pieces, and no one was able to tame him. And continually night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. And seeing Yeshua from a distance, he ran and bowed down to him. And having called out with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with you, Yeshua, son of the Most High God? Swear to Elohim not to torture me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, because we are many. 
and he begged him very much that he would not send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was there feeding near the mountains. And the demons begged him saying, send us to the pigs so that we enter into them. And he gave them permission and the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. They were about 2000 and the herd rushed down the, the sleep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. And those who fed the pigs fled and reported it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what had taken place. So they came to Yeshua and saw the demon possessed one, him who had the legion, sitting and dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Do you see that? This man was bound by a legion of unclean spirits. Amen. 2,000 to be exact. But what we see here is the spirit came to him. The spirit came to Yeshua. The minute it had seen him coming. Amen. They recognized his divine nature. He dwelt in them tombs unbound by natural chains, but held captive by unclean spirits. Let me say this again. The man in the tomb dwelt in the tomb unbound by natural chains but held captive by unclean spirits <laughs> unclean spirits are the cause of a lot of bad things there are they are a sign of impurity evil disobedience <laughs> they can cause mental illness blindness epilepsy diseases <laughs> they defile the host <laughs> and cause you to suffer I'm talking about unclean spirits <laughs> the unclean spirit recognizes a child of the most high and has to bow down to them. Amen. The spirit asked for Yeshua to not send them out of the country. Why did they ask him that? I said, why did they ask him that? Let me tell you, because unclean spirits like to remain in their comfort zone. Let me say that one more time. Because unclean spirits like to remain in their comfort zone. Does anybody hear me? They already broke their covenant with the father and their fate was already sealed. It's written in the book. They Asked to be cast into the pigs because unclean spirits love unclean vessels. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It made no difference to Yeshua that they went into the pigs since pigs were unclean anyway and devout Hebrews abhorred them. In other words, devout Hebrews didn't like them. Amen. They didn't touch them. They were irrelevant. <laughs> when you follow the laws of the Father, it makes you different. <laughs> I said, when you follow the laws of the Father, it makes you different. You see the world in a different way. We are in a fight to be restored back to the garden where dogs and pigs are not welcome. Wild dogs and pigs are accustomed to devouring flesh. Deuteronomy chapter 14, 8 says, And the pig is unclean for you because it has a split hoof but does not chew the cud. You do not eat their flesh or touch their dead carcasses. Get rid of what is unclean in your life. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. Don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. You are a child of the Most High. You are held at high regard. This man was released from his bondage. He didn't have to live in the tombs anymore. He could move to the palace now. He didn't have to be naked anymore. He was now clothed. He, even though he had cuts to his flesh. When he, when he had, when you have an encounter with Yeshua, how many, let me say it is, how many know when you have an encounter with Yeshua, there was always healing. There was always restoration. There was always a party in your honor. You are set back in your right mind and you receive the love of the father come on somebody somebody know what i'm talking about tonight yeah. receive the love of the father luke chapter 15 go with me real quick and i'm almost done luke chapter 15 verse 11 through 24 luke chapter 15 verses 11 through 24 and it reads and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father Give me the portion of goods put forth. And he divided his livelihood between them. And not many days after, the young son, having gathered all together, went away to a distant country, and there wasted his goods with loose living. And when he had spent all, 
There arose a severe scarcity of food throughout the land, and he began to be in need. And he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him to feed he sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. And he was longing to fill his stomach with the pods which the pigs were eating, and no one gave to him. But having come to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I am perishing with hunger? Having risen, I shall go to my father. I say to him, Father, I have sinned against the heavens and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And having risen, he went to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against the heavens heavens and before you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servants watch this y'all check this but the father said to his servants bring out the best robe and put on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and slaughter it and let us eat and rejoice because the son of mine was dead and is alive again and he was lost and is found and they begun to rejoice hallelujah the prodigal son was left to Feed the pigs, the lowest job you can have, especially for a Hebrew. He was a dis it was a disgrace, but he finally came to his senses and went back home. His father most must have always looked down that road. Can you imagine when your child leaves with their inheritance and you know that they, they don't have it in their right mind to do what's right with that money? His father must have always been looking down that road, praying for his son, hoping for a glimpse, hoping that one day he'd see him, and now his day had come, his prayers was answered, he gave his son a ring and a robe, and the best for his child, then slaughtered the fatted calf, the fatted calf was the best of the flock why did he do that? because his son had gone down the wrong road, I said because his son had gone down the wrong road he cast away all his wisdom, and he was no longer amongst those that were remaining under the covenant of the father it was like he was dead but he woke up tell somebody he woke up before it was too late I said he woke up before it was too late he begun to recap his life he began to think about it he began to recap his life and what blessings his father had and so he came out that backslidden state he raised up a child in the way that he he should go and from there he should not depart if you're covered remain covered be careful what you say be careful what you do who you're entertaining not everybody is for you not everybody will receive you let your lifestyle be a testimony of his greatness let the unclean spirits recognize that you're on your way out the door and you're bringing Yeshua with you and the Ruach the Holy Spirit spirit for backup. Huh? Pray the Father huh? to bring you to those who need help. Huh? That way you won't cast your prayers amongst the swine. Huh? The Father knows who will receive you huh? and who will pray against you. Huh? The minute they know who you are, huh? let his covering remain over you huh? and let his wisdom be your guide to truth. Huh? And by this we know huh? that we know him huh? if we guard his commands. Huh? The one who says, I know him and does not guard his commands is a liar and the truth is not in them but whoever God his word truly the love of Elohim has been perfected in him and by this we know we are in him the one who says he stays in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked beloved I write no recent command to you but an original command which you have from the beginning he who believes in him 
him is not judged. I said, he who believes in him is not judged. But he who does not believe is judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth, the only begotten son of Elohim. And this is the judgment that light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light. Don't cast your pearl amongst the swine, but a restoration is taking place. I said a restoration is taking place. The key of knowledge that has been withheld is being revealed again. He went to hell and took the keys. You have the victory now. You have the victory now. Don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Break out of it. Your circumstances is minor compared to your father. I said your circumstances is minor compared to your father. We thank you right now. We thank you right now, Father, for sending the Holy Ghost. We thank you right now for sending the help of Father. We thank you right now that we're not going to cast our pearl amongst the swine. We thank you right now for getting rid of the wild dogs. We thank you right now for opening up the kingdom. We thank you right now for opening up the windows of heaven. We thank you right now that we're going to obey his commands. We thank you right now that we're going to obey his word. We thank you right now for the only begotten son that died on the cross for our sins. We thank you right now that he thought fit father to come to earth father we thank you right now that he saw fit father to die upon that cross to shed his blood for us we thank you right now that he saw fit father to bring us your word father to bring us restoration father to prepare us father for those things that's getting ready to come father we thank you right now but we will not father cast out pearls amongst the swine father but we will honor your word father we will honor out of your way, Father. We will be in recognition, Father, of everything that you told us, Father. Everything that you teach us, Father. Just continue to give us your word, Father. And just continue to give us your love, Father. And we will continue to praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Hear the word. Hear the word. Hear the message that the Father is telling us. Don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Hallelujah. Don't give what is holy. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. Hallelujah. Don't cast away your wisdom. That the Father has given you in His Word. Don't cast away your wisdom that the Father has given you in His words. Yeah. Let not the pigs trample underfoot and tear you into pieces. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you right now for your word. We thank yeah. you right now for your word, Father, that's been brought forth, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, that. Your word will not come back unto you void, Father. We thank you right now, Father, that, that everybody on this line, Father, is healed, delivered, and set free, Father. Whatever might be going on in our lives, Father, we claim victory right now, Father. Whatever enemy is trying to cover come in our lives, Father, we claim victory right now, Father. The spirit of defeat, of defeat cannot live on this line. The spirit of defeat cannot live in our bodies. The spirit of defeat cannot live in our homes. The spirit of defeat cannot live in our jobs. Hallelujah, Father. We thank the Father. We thank you, Father, because we serve you. The Father of Abraham Isaac and Jacob father we have the victory father our forefathers had the victory father and because we're in, we're blessed into the into the lineage father because we are blessed into the bloodline father we are blessed as well I thank you father that we can realize today that we are blessed as well what we got to do is follow your word what we got to do is not cast your pearls amongst the swine father we thank you right now father 
Amen. We give you all glory, honor, and praise, Father. And Father, I just pray, Amen. Father, that you continue to touch us, Father, that you remove the enemy out of everybody's life, Father. All your Amen. saints, Father, that are on the line right now, anybody that the enemy is trying to touch, anybody that the enemy is continually messing with, anybody that the, is continuously going around in a circle, Father, I rebuke it right now, Father. I stop it right now, Father. In the name of Yeshua, Father, I stop it right now, Father. In the name of Yeshua, Father, I stop it right now, Father. Enemy, you gotta go. Enemy, you gotta leave them alone. Enemy, you gotta come out of their body. Sickness, you gotta come out of their body. D diseases, you gotta come out of their body. Right now, in the name of Yeshua, I claim it right now. I claim it right now. In the precious name, in the power of the Almighty Father, in the power of the creator of earth, in the power of the creator of the heavens, I de decree and I demand and I declare it so right now, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, that sickness can't dwell in our bodies, that sickness cannot dwell in our bodies anymore, that pain cannot dwell in our bodies anymore, that we are more than conquerors, Father, for those who love Christ Yeshua, Father, we just thank you, give you all glory, honor, and praise, Father. This night, Father, this night, Father, and this night, Father, and for many more nights, Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.